Hey, welcome to this retro review of the Bowers & Wilkins P7 headphones. I say it's a retro review because you can't buy these new anymore, but thankfully you can get them on the used market and for a pretty good deal if you're lucky, or at least you're looking hard enough. Before I tell you about the product itself and give it a full review, it's a little important for me to give you some historical context about these because these are definitely audiophile grade headphones, right? Uh, they're priced accordingly or were priced accordingly. The sound is definitely there, but they're not a typical audiophile type product. Now, to understand why we have to go back in time about 10, 12 years, back to 2009, 2010, actually. At that point in time, uh, you know, Bowers and Wilkins had been uh, making loudspeakers for about 45 years, and they had a stellar reputation, and still do, for making some of the very best loudspeakers in the world at all sorts of different price categories, but you know, usually sort of upper mid-range to very, very high-end, super high-end speakers. And they got into the headphone market and other accessories market uh, starting around 2009, 2010 for a couple of reasons that were happening in the general global marketplace. And the first of these around that time was, of course, the Great Recession. And the Great Recession uh, was causing all sorts of horrible things in the global economy. A lot of banks were going under or, or in danger of going under. Consulting firms were going under. Insurance companies were at risk. And, you know, it, there was turmoil financially everywhere. And, and high-end audio manufacturers certainly weren't immune to those problems happening. There were a lot of uh, companies who were who frankly didn't make it out of that time, and a whole lot of others that either during that time or within a few years afterward got hoovered up into large conglomerates. And some of them are doing well, and some of them are kind of not exactly how they used to be. So that was one thing. The second thing was this advent of the mobile lifestyle. Well, that's something that had been actually cooking up for a few years prior, primarily with these things, you know, MP3 players, and of course the iPod here, this is an original one from 2002. Uh, these uh, had, had become a sort of a slow burning hit. And then that term, that trend really accelerated with the new smartphones, including the iPhone. And this is an iPhone 4S from around that time period. And yes, I have a little bit of a problem holding on to old dead technology. I, I promise I'll, I'll get help for that. But anyway, back to the review. Uh, by 2010, when all this stuff was happening, the audio industry was basically dying because people had gotten used to carrying their music libraries around with them and these things all the time. And they didn't really relish the thought of spending a bunch of money on a product that they could only enjoy at home, right? They wanted to enjoy their music anywhere they went. And for the longest time, companies such as Bowers & Wilkins, frankly, and the high end had just been concentrating ever more intently on old, rich fuddy-duddies. And the market was turning away from the old, rich fuddy-duddies. You know, it was, it, was, it was clear that some other opportunities were opening up for companies who were willing to look. So they said, okay, we need some new revenue streams because with the economic times being as, as uncertain as they are, who knows, Bowers & Wilkins may cease to be what it is today. So they got into, in short order, making a series of headphones like these and Bluetooth speakers and computer speakers, all of high quality and all at different price points. The headphones specifically, they had three different headphones that were uh, announced around 2009, but you couldn't actually go see any of these until 2010. And they were initially uh, only available to the public to view and sort of test out at, you guessed it, Apple stores. I don't know if Steve Jobs had anything to do with this. In my mind's eye, I kind of like to think he did because he was a big hi-fi lover. We've all seen that picture of him from that beautiful mansion he bought in California where he's just sitting on the bare floor and all he's got in the whole house apparently is just a, a floor lamp and then a hi-fi system sitting on the floor. So I like to think, you know, he was still alive and very much in control of the company at that time. So maybe he had a little something to do with that? Probably. In any case, you could only see these things, uh, the Bowers & Wilkins headphones, at Apple stores at first. 
And they had three different headphones they were making at the time. The first of these was the P3, available in white and black. I just happen to have a white pair with me here. You can get these in white and black because of course you want your headphones to match your, your iPhone, right? You, you want it to match. You don't want, see this, black, no, 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 this is bad, this is bad. You want this, you want it to match, right? So they had the P3, this listed at $200, $199, right? It's an on-ear design, it's compact. They also had a P5, which I don't have with me here, but just imagine a slightly swole version of these. Also an on-ear design, bigger drivers, a little bit bigger, uh, still portable. Uh, that was at $299, so a $300 headphone set at that, at that price point. And then, of course, you had the big boys, the flagship, the P7s. Now, these were an over or around ear design uh, at the, uh, there, but these were also still built as a compact, <laughs> believe it or not, a compact headphone. This still had all the uh, functionality you'd expect from more, uh, the more sort of portable models. Now, going to an Apple store and trying these devices out was both, uh, it was always a, an interesting experience and kind of uh, an exciting experience and also a frustrating experience. Because at least in the Apple stores in the metro area where I live, I would always see the P3s available. I'd slip them on and think, wow, these sound fantastic. I mean, for a little por portable headphone, I mean, it's 200 bucks, which is a lot, but boy, they sure sound nice. And then I'd try the P5s and think, man, this is even better. I'm really impressed with this. Even just plugged in straight to a, a, an iPhone or an iPad or an iMac, whatever they happen to have at the store there, they sounded great. But they never had the P7s to try out. And I always wondered, I wonder what the P7s are like. If the P3s are this good and the P5s are a noticeable step up, I wonder how great these are, or if they're great at all. It was many years later that I was finally able to answer that question for myself. I found this pair in basically mint condition on eBay. The seller was asking $150 for them. I offered $135 and he took the offer almost immediately. So for $135 bucks, plus the tax and shipping, I got myself a set of P7s, which is great because these things originally listed at $400, right? $399 to $400, which is a lot to ask, frankly, of probably anybody coming into an Apple store. But these things were definitely made for music lovers who wanted to enjoy their music on the go. Now, I never worked at Bowers and Wilkins. I have no idea what the product brief was for this, but I like to think when they started off on their journey to making this series of headphones, and this one in particular, they had three major goals in mind for these. The first is it had to look, feel, and smell like a premium product. Uh, and, and boy, this one does. Um, it's probably hard to tell from the camera here, but there's a super soft leather on the top and the bottom uh, with reverse stitching here on the top of the headband. Uh, and you get this gorgeous, I don't know if it's, Aluminum. I don't know if it's just you know polished chrome stainless steel, and I don't really care. But it's beautiful curved metal. It looks like some sort of Art Deco furniture from the 1920s or something. Uh, and then you've got the on the each of the magnetically held ear cups here, the same soft, beautiful leather that you get on the headband, and even on the back of the cups here. Is the same soft leather. It's just so luxurious. It just looks great. And of course, you've got your big Bowers and Wilkins logo here, which lets everybody know you're better than they are. And that's an important thing when you're spending 400 bucks on a pair of headphones, right? Yeah. So they definitely knocked it out of the park on the first requirement that I'm imagining, at least. The second thing about these is they needed to support that mobile lifestyle I was talking about. So yeah, I mean, these are audiophile grade headphones. They come with two cables, uh, one of which is a, uh, a typical cable that you'd see here with the uh, little controls to use for an, uh, an iPhone or an iPad or a MacBook. You change the track, change the volume, play, stop, all that sort of stuff. So you can use these things, any of these, you know, headphones from Bowers and Wilkins, but even the, the big bad boys here, you can use them. Uh, to make calls, take calls, do FaceTime calls, any sort of video conferencing stuff that you want to do, you can use these. It's, it's perfectly compatible with all of them. 
right? So from that perspective, it, 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 it certainly works. But then you think, well, a mobile lifestyle, these don't look like they'd necessarily be very mobile, but they are. You see, they've got the little left and right ear indicators here. These, and these on the bottom of these beautiful stops. These stops aren't there just for looks though, right? These little cylinders, they're actually functional. There's a hinge inside that allows you to fold the headphones up, you know, and you can just roll the, the cable up and it comes with <laughs> this equally luxurious leather pouch with a sort of a, I don't know if this is actually, it's like an Alcantara kind of, you know, feeling uh, internal uh, material here. Again, with the reverse stitching that matches the headband. So you can just pop these into your little, uh, into the little pouch here, put this inside your Toomey briefcase, you know, your, your coach uh, leather purse, whatever you, you have, and you're, you're set to go. All right, so it definitely supports the mobile lifestyle. Now, yes, you would need a kind of a big purse or a big briefcase to put these in, but they're portable. They're definitely portable. And then the third thing is that they needed to make all your music sound great, no matter what they're plugged into, all right? Again, this is 2009, 2010. The headphone market was a lot different than it is today. And, you know, the thought of, you know, for most people of getting like a separate desktop uh, amplifier, DAC, that kind of stuff. That was not nearly the market it is today. A lot of people weren't exactly into that at that time. It's grown a lot since then. Uh, so these were designed to make the most out of the music that you're playing out of whatever device you're playing them out of, right? Whether it's uh, just, you know, comes straight into your iPhone. And this is back in the day, remember when you had headphone jacks and iPhones, remember those crazy days? But yeah, you could just plug it into your iPhone, your iPad, MacBook, whatever, and you wouldn't need an amp to run them because they're 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 pretty sensitive, fairly efficient headphones, right? So you can crank them up loud just from the little built-in amplifier in your mobile device, uh, and they do a really great job of really making the most of whatever files you have on on available to you, right? So whether they're fairly middling quality MP3 files, or if you get, you know, really nice high quality FLAC files, high res files, et cetera, um, they're going to make the most of whatever you've got. Uh, and they, they scale very well. So if you do have a headphone amp to plug these into, uh, you know, with a good uh, digital audio converter or a nice stereo receiver or an integrated amp, preamp, what have you, the higher quality stuff you can plug these into, the better their advantage, they're able to take advantage of, of that extra fidelity coming through and they transmit that to you all the time. But the great thing is you don't need to have to plug those into a device like that. Uh, and that to me is, you know, one of the ways in which they really knocked it out of the park here because what a wonderful thing that, especially a high dollar audio product that doesn't expect anything, ask anything from you other than just to plug it in and feed it an audio signal, and then it gives you your music back to you in the most pleasant way possible, right? What a great thing. Typically, the higher you go up the audio chain, the more the manufacturers seem to, to ask of you. Like, no, 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 you can't just plug these into your phone or, or, or your computer. No, you've got to have, a, you've got to have a, a serious amp to run these, and you've got to have a really high-quality deck, you know, to, to, for them to even sound decent. These... It's all easy peasy. So let's talk about the sound for a little bit. So as I mentioned earlier, these headphones were kind of designed to make the most of whatever you have and to be basically as inoffensive <laughs> as possible. Now, let me emphasize that doesn't mean they're boring to listen to because they're not boring at all. There's a huge amount of detail that comes through these. What they've done, I think, is you know they, they've done some trickery with the pads uh, to, to bring up the bass a little bit. So, I mean, the, I mean, yes, they're over the ear headphones, but they're not huge headphones. I mean, if you were to compare these to say Sennheiser headphones, I mean, these look, these look petite <laughs> in comparison to those, to those kind of headphones, right? The cups are pretty small, but because it's a closed design, they put out a lot of bass. 
And the way they've tuned the bass, uh, to me, I, I never found it to be flabby, uncontrolled, boomy, inaccurate. Uh, the mid-range is, I think, kind of representative of sort of that Bowers and Wilkins typical, I hate to say house sound, but I don't know what else to call it, so I'm going to call it the house sound. Sorry, Bowers and Wilkins, if you call it something different, I don't know what else to call it, so forgive me. But they sound great. It's a, it's a very clear, crystal clear mid-range, in fact. Uh, the imaging is very precise and doesn't waver as long as you have a good signal going through it. Uh, and the treble is also very, very detailed, but you can tell they've rolled it off just, just, a, just a smidge, just a skosh. Is that the correct technical term, the correct engineering term? A smidge, a skosh? Is that an imperial smidge or a metric smidge? Mm, we'll have to find out in another video. But anyway, they rolled it off just, just a little bit so that you never seem to get any sibilance. Even when you're cranking these things up, if you just got them plugged into your into a, an iPhone or something that doesn't have the best you know built-in amp or something, you never seem to get any sibilance through them. And that's great. Again, they scale well. So you can you can have a fantastic experience even if you're just listening to them, you're know, watching a movie on your iPad late at night right? Or if you've got them plugged into a dedicated headphone amp with a nice DAC, etc., they'll scale very well. You're always going to get a great experience with these things, and that's one of the reasons I really love them. And I really recommend them as a result of that. These days, you don't have to spend $400 to find a pair of these. Again, I, I was fairly lucky I got mine for uh, $135, and that included the original box that came in and the uh, the, uh, the luxurious pouch we talked about uh, a few minutes ago. And it came with the, there, there are two cables that come with the phone. One that has the, the controls and one that's just a plain old wire. And now this is kind of a funky wire. The way this fits into the headphone here, and just remove the little magnetic cup attachment. And it's got this, this sort of L, sort of a hockey stick. <laughs> kind of L-shaped connector in there. Bowers and Wilkins, it, it is it is proprietary, but Bowers and Wilkins still makes uh, the replacement parts uh, for these headphones. The the cable, the these luxurious pads. You can even get the pouch <laughs> if you if you happen to get a set of these, but they don't have a pouch. You can get one brand spanking new from Bowers and Wilkins uh, online. I think they even sell the, what they call the, it's called the Beauty Box. I think that's what they call it. I think you can even get this online. So yeah, you could you could put it all back together if you really wanted to be a complete uh, completionist about the whole thing. But but yeah, either way, I highly recommend these. Uh, they sound great. They don't ask anything from you of a user. And you know, I would especially recommend something like this to somebody who's getting into headphones, maybe for the first time. Maybe you're looking to buy a set of uh, a set of really nice headphones that look really cool with a closed back, so you can take them anywhere, right? Uh, and that you don't need an amp to power them, and that they're going to sound good with basically anything that you pair them with, you know. And again, if you get them for again, this was about a year and a half or two years ago, I got them for 135 bucks. You could probably get them even cheaper today if you look around, right? So yeah, highly recommended. I love them. I suggest you try to find a pair yourself and uh, enjoy them. Good luck.